Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's been a long journey, but today we document the last guitar in the Parallel Universe Volume 2 series by Fender. And I'm happy to say that today's episode is sponsored by Fender themselves. They sent me this guitar. I do have to send it back, but they did compensate me for my time in making this video. Normally I buy them myself, but this is kind of a, a special situation here. So the final installment in this series is called the Spark-O-Matic. We've taken a look at one of every one from this series, and if you guys are interested, I will do another video where I kind of rank them all, so make sure you vote in my community poll on that if you want to see that video. Since I've had hands-on experience with all of them, I can, you know, tell you which one was my favorite, which one you should buy whenever you can find them. But this has to be one of the most strange jazz masters that I've ever seen come out of Fender, and that's saying a lot. Today, we have Fender's Firebird. <laughs> that's what everybody's saying about this guy, because we've got the Troublemaker Tellies, right? Those are trying to be Les Paul custom style guitars within the Tele. But this, it's kind of going for that Firebird vibe, simply because, hey, we get three mini humbuckers. I have not seen Fender use many mini humbuckers on guitars. Many, many, mini humbuckers, that's fun to say. But instead of doing it on a Telecaster, we get this Jazz Master that looks so strange without any type of pickguard on it. That's all I've got to say. That's my first impressions of this thing. But we still have the whole Jazz Master style trem on it. We get the Jazz Master style bridge. It's just the pickups and, you know, layout here is a little bit different. Typical five-way selector switch. Any fancy electronics? Nope. Looks like I'll have to put that back on. It's pretty basic, but hey, check that out. I love it. They actually put Sparkomatic at the top. I always want to call it the Jazzomatic because it's like a jazz master. But this is actually one of the most affordable ones out of the series. It's only $1,999. It's expensive, but you know, as compared to the other ones that are about 500 to 600 bucks more, it's relatively affordable. But when we first saw these at NAMM 2020, I was questioning, did they actually do a neck through? No, it's just a bolt-on neck still, but they make it a three-piece body, so it has the illusion of that Firebird neck through. So first impressions of this, it's a little bit goofy, it's a little bit weird, really wide feeling neck that's super skinny but yet still rounded. Kind of basic, but I dig it at the same time. I can't wait to throw this thing on the workbench and take an individual look at the parts and specs with you guys. Because there's a few things, you know, under the hood that makes this even more special. Inside old Sparky here. Let's take a look at these pickups first. So I was kind of surprised to see that these are Seymour Duncan pickups in here. They call them the Seymourized mini humbuckers. So you get the SM1N in the neck. And the bridge is marked as an SM3B. Now what did they use for the middle? It's probably a neck again would be my guess, but there's actually no way to take that out. It's like such a short lead, it's just stuck. To really show you guys my dedication here, I will go ahead and take it out of the mounting springs, just so we know. Oh man, even after all that, I still can't get it out. There we go. It must have been like caught up or something like that. So yes, it's another neck pickup, the SM1N. But since we got the pickup ring off, we'll go ahead and take a look at this. This is a metal material. It's not plastic. It's not just a metal topper. I mean, that's not going to break on you. That feels pretty good. As far as our pickup cavities, it looks like they're completely shielded off and we get the regular barcodes in here. Nothing too fancy to take a gander at though. As far as the bridge, they're using the American Professional bridge on this one. And this is what it looks like underneath the Jazzmaster style trim. I haven't taken one of these things off. I always tell you to reference a different video, but since, I mean, this one doesn't have too much going on, I thought I'd do it. So inside here, it kind of looks like a giant Kaler route. But it has a letter P, or I guess it could also be a D and that's just there to ground off the trem system itself. And the way that this bad boy works is you string it up down here so that the ball end of the string gets caught right there. And then underneath the hood, you basically have this giant spring and you compress that in order to make the warbly effect because that's all connected to that. So that'll move these up and down. But you can also lock your trem down 
using this little button right here. So what you do is you have to press the bar all the way down, and then when you slide that back, it adds this block and it prevents that thing from moving. And if you wanna have full range again, all you have to do is slide that up and then be careful that you don't pinch your fingers if you have it outside of the guitar. But you do not have to remove it in order to do that. So when you have this lock activated, it can no longer be pulled back. So that'll help with your tuning stability a little bit. So right now it's locked. You can only go down. But if you push down the bar, push up to unlock it, now you can go up. So it just depends on how you want to use it. I'll use it like this though. As far as the controls, it is a five-way selector switch, so it's going to be more versatile than a regular Firebird because you can now get neck, neck, middle, 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 bridge, bridge, kind of like a Stratocaster. Simple master volume, master tone here. No fancy in and out of phase, coil splits, taps, nothing. It's just a pretty basic guitar. They even went as far as putting a side output jack. Impressive. And our readings are pretty hot. Bridge pickup, 11.3. Middle position, 6. Neck, about the same, six. So this will be about three-ish. Yep, and this will be in between those guys. Four, interesting. But here's where things get interesting. So remember that three-piece body we're talking about? It's multiple species of wood. So the wings on the guitar are actually made of ash. And on top of that, they're chambered. Now, how do they chamber it? I, I'm really not sure. <laughs> I think before they put it in, they must take a router this way and like chamber some of the wood out to make it a little bit lighter. And then they join it to the mahogany core right here. That'd be my best guess. Cause that's, that's kind of funny. The whole internet is saying this is a firebird when the firebird initially was just kind of like Gibson's take on a jazz master. So technically Fender came first in this territory. But I really wish they would have went with like a fake little pick guard down here that lines up perfectly straight and like um, put a little jazzy guy on it. I don't know, make up some other animal for this thing because that would just make it funny. My best guess here is that this was just an experiment. If people love this thing, they start talking about it online, they have good sales, I could see them doing it again and having a more blinged out version. And I'm excited for that because they've kind of done the troublemaker telly a lot. I would like to see them, you know, do some more pseudo tributes and competition models. As far as our fretboard, it is rosewood and we have 22 medium jumbo frets. That's actually pretty nice, you know, medium jumbo is kind of Gibson-esque territory as well. So it's not vintage tall or anything like that. So these will be very familiar to me. And we have this regular Fender scale length, 25 and a half inches. And they went with the nine and a half fretboard radius. So not super flat, not super rounded, just kind of an in-betweener neck there. But our bone nut measures 1.71 inches and that increases to 2.05 by the 12th. The first fret neck depth is 0.85 inches. It stays fairly consistent, 0.92 by the 12th. But this is what I would consider like a, a slim C neck shape would be my best guess. I mean, it's rounded, but it feels really flat and wide. Honestly, not my favorite feeling neck so far, but sometimes that changes when you sit down and actually start to play the thing. As far as the headstock goes, we get the vintage style tuners that you poke down, wrap around, one single string tree, and the Fender Spark-O-Matic. Love that spec. Love it that they put it on there. It's kind of the one downfall of a lot of uh, parallel universe guitars. They don't actually put the official name anywhere, so they could potentially get lost to time if it wasn't for internet historians documenting them. As far as QC, the only thing I've noticed so far is the fretboard was a little bit dry when it came in, but a quick conditioning job fixed that all right. I didn't notice any stripped out screws when I was taking them out. Now, very sad to say, I had a small mishap while installing this middle pickup. I, I had it in my hand, putting the things in, and it dropped on the guitar. And it's like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so it chipped the black finish a little bit. I touched it up, but, you know, if you ever have a Sparkomatic one day and you see a little chip, yep, that was me. I'm sorry. But anyways, moving on to the back here. There's a nice good look at that mahogany center core block with the wings of ash. But this... Uh, it sure doesn't look attractive. That's all I've got to say. I feel like that should be recessed into the body. They're just kind of sticking out there. 
But I guess I wasn't even realizing that without the pick guard on top, they would have to do this. I really think they should go with the pick guard, to be honest. But then they would have had to customize something out. I'm sure they just had these from Telecasters. That just... I, I don't like the way that looks. That's what I'll say about that. But everything else about this guitar, besides that, I love. It's kind of fun. But oh my goodness, we actually do get to see inside the cavities. How cool is that? So I guess we'll have to go on an adventure here inside the Sparkomatic. So there's where you can see where they routed out the side of the body in order to put the output jack on. It really seems like they chamber this out to the area that they join to the mahogany. But at the same time, that kind of leaves them very little room to glue that onto the body. So maybe they actually have like little tabs over here that are a bit larger. And perhaps since this is so thin, that's why they don't recess them anymore, because that would leave, you know, just barely any wood left. It'd probably be pretty prone to cracking, it'd be my guess. So that was interesting. As far as our pots, looks like some nice quality stuff. Just master volume, master tone with the whole mess of wires. And it's kind of cool to see the three-way toggle switch just mounted like that to the top. And the neck plate bears our serial number 203137, Parallel Universe Series. And for some reason, you know, looking at the top, I thought it was a mahogany neck. No, this is just a tinted natural maple neck, so nothing too fancy here. But mahogany would have been pretty cool. But one last thing to talk about is the finish itself. You notice how this is all shiny? This is actually a gloss nitro finish. So that is a premium spec when it comes to fenders. And you still have a nitro finish on the neck, but it's a satin finish. So if you don't like sticking to it and you don't like the glossiness, you're gonna like this neck. So it's really a player's instrument in that aspect. As far as the edges of the guitar, I mean, just basic stuff, usual cutaways, typical strap buttons. Nothing else too fancy to look at here. Only thing left to capture would be the weight. Despite the chambered wings, still a decent weight. Eight pounds, one ounces. So let's go ahead, plug this thing in and hear how it sounds. I didn't really even know what to expect, but so far I'm really liking it. We just heard the neck pick up straight up. It's very jazzy, surprisingly. I didn't even try to roll down the tone. I guess we could. Kind of interesting. Now let's do some chords. Let's try just the middle. This sounds really good clean. So let's kind of run through the positions one more time. So neck pick up. I like how full that bridge sounds. I mean, the neck is nice and full too. Creamy, whereas this has a bit more bright and attack to it. Almost Telecaster-like. Thank you. 
not something I'm used to with mini humbuckers, so it still has like that thickness of the neck pickup, but just a little bit extra chime. kind of how this one is too. It still has that mellowness, but just a little bit brighter. Fantastic clean guitar. I'm really digging that. So I'll be interested to see if the distorted tones hold up. Let's find out. <laughs> Bridge pickup sounds absolutely fantastic. It's so crisp and clear. I think this has to be my first mini humbuckered guitar that I'm just completely enamored with this thing. Let's try our neck pickup. <laughs> as well. It doesn't get super muddy, even like on like the normally muddy chord. <laughs> Middle position. <laughs> Now that we know all about the Sparkomatic, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Oh man. So far, I think this might be the number one from the Parallel Universe Volume 2 series. It might not be the most pretty, but I think it sounds the best. I think it's played the best so far. But I'm not saying that for 100% sure. Remember, you gotta vote in the community poll if you want me to make that video or not. But I will say, this definitely ranks towards the top here because it is... I'm blown away by this thing, just how much I like this. I wasn't necessarily looking forward to this one, but it's proven itself to me. What I like 
are the clean tones. They're fantastic and overdriven. They're pretty good. So I think that's more so a testament to Seymour Duncan making really awesome mini humbuckers. That's the first pair that I've ended up really liking. And locking that bridge, this thing actually stayed in tune really well. I do suggest if you buy one of these, lubricate your nut, which is a little bit of pencil lead, and definitely lubricate your saddles. I was getting ping, 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 but after just marking that with some pencil, I don't get any of that anymore. So fantastic there. If I had to say that there was something that I didn't like about this guitar, I think it really just comes down to cosmetic stuff. Like I think it would have been awesome to have that pick guard as we talked about. And look at this headstock cap. Doesn't that look like it should be like a roasted maple or a mahogany neck? They definitely made that super dark on the front. But then on the back, it's like, oh yeah, of course that's maple. So I think that would be something cool as well. Pretty much the only thing that I absolutely despise on this guitar is uh, how cheesy these back plates look. It's not necessarily the shape of them. I mean, they could make them square if they wanted to. It's just mainly how much they stick out like that. I don't notice them while playing or anything because it rubs up against your body here and not necessarily down there. So maybe they could work on that in the next iteration here. So Fender. Do, do some more of these. I think you're onto something. Just make a super blinged out one. I but anyways, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out all of the Parallel Universe Volume 2 guitars. If you happen to have missed a video, you can check them out on my channel. Just search Trogly Parallel Universe Volume 2. You'll find them all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.